it's Julie Davison. Welcome to Thursday Night Stamp Therapy. I am so glad that you guys are here with me tonight. I see so many of you. Sorry I'm running a little bit late. I got busy playing with um, with all the new goodies and I'm just, I didn't set a timer. I should have set a timer. Do you guys do that? I set timers on my phone so that I <laughs> don't lose track of time and forget and I just didn't tonight. So I've got three new projects to share with you. One using Celebration and two using the mini catalog. And you can see I use little post-it notes and I flag pages that I really like the projects on and then I copy them. And right before I popped on, I thought, oh my gosh, there's a supply list and I always forget about it. So I'm going to find the supply list and I'm going to put it in the link in the video description so that you can check it out. So for all the samples that are in the catalog, Stampin' Up! publishes a supply list. Usually it doesn't have like measurements, but just kind of a list of supplies to help you figure out how they made something. The colors, the, you know, embossing folders, whatever. So um, I find it really helpful when I want to copy from the catalog, and I do that a lot. We call it casing. I like the definition of copy and selectively edit, C-A-S-E. Um, and so I always like to make projects and kind of make my own twist on them. But the document is really helpful in figuring out the supplies that they used so that, um, you know, you can figure out what supplies you need. So I'm going to be casing this project tonight as well as, oh, oh dear, <laughs> a, little glue, a little glue in there as well as this one with the grassy grove. So we're gonna make those two projects, but before we do that, I wanted to play with the Awesome Otters. This is a stamp set that you can get for free during celebration, which is right now until February 28th. So you can get this stamp set for free when you order $50 or more uh, before tax and shipping in the United States. So that's really exciting. There's some really amazing um, gift options, designer paper, stamp sets. I love the variety of the stamp sets. Oh, the rainbow paper. I have to show you this card really quick. I'm not going to do it tonight. <laughs> but uh, the project playback that posted yesterday, I made this card for that. It's a corner pocket card using this sunshine and rainbow designer paper. So if you haven't seen the project playback video, I'll put the link in the video description. Uh, it's the most recent video on my YouTube channel that I posted yesterday on January 12th. Um, and I just love the way this turned out. These colors are just so much fun. Um, there's some bright colors and some pastel colors in the sunshine and rainbows designer paper. And actually, I'm going to use a little bit of this pattern on our awesome otters card tonight. So we got the rainbow and sunshine. We got the marble paper. There's the, the um, otters. The friendly hello is a level two which you need to order $100 to get. And the other one that's a level two is a special moments, which, oh my gosh, like this is must have, guys. <laughs> if you get nothing else, like this is it. I love this stamp set. It's just so versatile and you can use it for so many different things. And then this one back here, I think is kind of confusing, but this one is free when you have a $300 order or a $300 party. So uh, this gorgeous stamp set, look at the detail on that. This is a distinctive stamp set. I have it and I haven't inked it up yet. And I was just thinking I should have done that tonight. So I'm going to ink it up and we'll maybe we'll make a card with it next time. And then, of course, if you join uh, during celebration, you can choose two free stamp sets of your choice from the mini catalog, from the annual catalog. So that's really exciting. It's always a good deal. You get $125 in product for $99 plus tax. And then right now during celebration, you get two extra free stamp sets on top of that. It's crazy. Okay, so we're going to make a card with the Awesome Otters. And I think I've showed you guys this before. I do a lot of um, a lot of sketching. Oh, some of the sketch is not mine. <laughs> I'm not sure. Thomas was doodling. Um, but then I was doodling um, over lunch. I think I was looking at like some old projects that I'd done and I kind of like had sketched out some layouts that I liked. And so this is the one that I kind of came back to tonight. So I don't know. Do you guys do that? Do you kind of draw out cards? I, I do that a lot. In fact, we had a little team stamp and share last night and I was doodling a card that someone 
that someone showed on screen. So um, I always love to sketch it out, kind of get an idea, a layout in my head. And even though it may not turn out exactly like that, it just sort of helps to guide me in figuring out where to put stuff on the card. So from that sketch, I cut a little piece of designer paper. This is that rainbow paper, the sunshine and rainbows. Um, I chose crumb cake for the card base because I just love this combination of pool party and crumb cake. And then we're going to have a tag and I think it really pops against the crumb cake. So um, I also cut a little bit of my favorite pattern there and we're just going to kind of layer those on there. So we're going to start here by using the um, scallop tag topper punch. Actually, I think this one's called the um, delightful. No, no, no. Um, no, is it delightful? Fanciful. It's the fanciful tag topper punch. We've had a couple different tag topper punches in the past and um, this is my favorite. We've got two in the catalog right now. So we're going to do a little tag and maybe I'm going to cut it short but first I want to stamp our otter and so we're going to stamp in a memento ink and then also um, do some coloring with the stamp and blend. So let's do let's do our little otter and I think he needs a party hat too because I want to incorporate some of the colors from this paper and what better way to do that than with a little party hat. I'm getting down real low. <laughs> oh, I did pretty good. I was thinking that I might need to just cut it out, <laughs> um, but I think I did. I think I did pretty good getting it right on top of his head. Um, and then for the sentiment, I love this you are utterly awesome <laughs> and so I'm gonna do that on um whoops I feel like I got a little too much ink there this is so saffron cardstock I guess that Y just has a little extra on it doesn't it doesn't it look like it's got like a little hmm okay um what was I gonna do? let's try that one. Well, we'll see how it goes. Oh my goodness, Zaina, it is 1.30 a.m. You need to go to sleep, girl. <laughs> what are you doing here? Um, <laughs> oh, even thank you. I thought I was going to have to cut it out and, and paste it over, but I did do pretty good. Um, I'm so bad sometimes on <laughs> watching your comments, and so I'm so sorry if you commented something and I missed it. I will absolutely um, come back later and take a look at it. So thank you, everyone who's, I keep seeing all your comments that you're sharing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, I love that you share so other stamping friends can join us and get creative. I'm just going to trim that a little bit. Now, for size reference, I did start out with a two by four inch tag. And then I stamped and I cut it down a little bit. So I'm going to color with Stampin' Blend, so we're going to use um, light and dark crumb cake. So I'm going to do, I think, a lighter belly and a darker body. Does that sound right for an otter? I gotta like look up some pictures. What color are otters? Are they brown? Are they gray? Maybe both? Well, I'm gonna start with this crumb cake and add the dark next. I'm trying to go around the eyes. And I swear, coloring on camera is so nerve wracking. <laughs> I feel like uh, I rush it a little bit. I should have colored and stamped it ahead of time. I usually, you guys know, I don't love to color, but the otter is pretty easy because he doesn't have a lot of there's not much to them, you know, it's pretty straightforward coloring. So this is my kind of coloring. And then you can just add some. Oh, I got his eye. I was trying to leave it empty. Did you know for the Stampin' Blends that we have this um, color lifter? Let me get it out. It's kind of like a clear, not clear, but like, well, it looks white. And um, 
it sort of blends the color. It's not perfect, but like it does lighten up. So I can put it on his eye and it does kind of help to lighten that up since I kind of went, I went where it wasn't supposed to go. Actually, that worked pretty well, I think. So um, because I'm using the light on the middle and the dark on the outside, I oh, oh my goodness gracious. Um, <laughs> the cat the cap went flying. I had to go get it. Um, I'm just going back over with the dark and like adding another layer where I want the like the shading to be. And I don't know what I'm doing, so <laughs> you could probably tell me that I'm doing it wrong and I would believe you. Um, let's do some pool party too. So I'm getting colors for the party hat. And I'm going to do pool party for the base and then some colored dots. And I want to color his nose. <laughs> I'm going to color his nose pink too. I chose Calypso Coral and then I have, this is light so saffron, but let me grab the dark. There, yes. Oh, this is so cute. And it's gonna match that paper so well. Look at that. Love it. Okay, are you yay or nay on Mr. Otter? <laughs> I know some of you are just not so sure and I totally understand. Um, I like the cute critters. <laughs> I think they're really fun to stamp with and to play with, but, um, they're not for everybody. I understand that. So let's go ahead and glue this down. Um, I will try to include the measurements in the video description when we're all done, but the designer paper on the front is two and three quarter inches by four. And then this one is two inches by three inches. And so the my idea was just that it would kind of be like another, another layer to introduce some color. Maybe I wanna do it like this way. No, I think I like it vertical. But before we add all of that, I want to add some ribbon. And so I'm using the Pool Party Sheer Ribbon and then I thought I'd tie it off with some twine. Um, okay. Eve says, is there a reason for color with Stampin' Blends rather than markers? So the Stampin' Blends just sort of blend a little bit better than the, the regular Stampin' Write markers. Um, and that is the reason I think that a lot of people prefer them, but on a smaller image like this, um, I don't think it makes as, as big of a difference. So if you're coloring with um, regular markers, I mean, that's totally fine. Um, in fact, I used colored pencils when I colored this one, and then I used the blender pen to blend it. A little bit of Wink of Stella. I should get some Wink of Stella on this guy. Oh yes, on the party hat. Um, so really, I think whatever you're most comfortable with. If you like the Stampin' Blends, use the Stampin' Blends. If you like the um, regular markers, use the regular markers. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Always room for some, <laughs> some Wink of Stella, isn't there? This ribbon is very, um, it's very, very light. So I'm actually going to double up on this just so that there's like a little more, um, a little more bulk to it. And then I'm going to use some twine to tie it off. Okay, so yay or nay on the otters. I saw some of your comments. Is there, and I think if you don't like the otters, I would say, do you 
Are you a fan of other little critter stamps or do you just not like critter stamps in general? Because we've had a lot. I feel like every celebration we have a different set, right? Last year it was the donkeys and then we had, what else have we had? The meerkats, the pandas. I feel like there's always some kind of like frogs. We had frogs one year. Zebras, yes, we had zebras. Those weren't celebration, but those were just some another stamp set. Sheep, yes, <laughs> that's the one I couldn't think of. Deanna, I I saw chickens. Yes, you said that it was jumping around. Like, are are you not? I don't know. Are you having connection issues, or is it turtles? Yeah, there's lots of critters. You guys are really, you're brainstorming a lot of them. So if you don't like the otters, do you like other critters or do you just not care for the animal stamps as much? They are a little maybe kiddish, but I kind of like the cute little whimsical. Um, okay, Lori says hers is not jumping. So um, it might, Deanna, it might be your connection. Um, hopefully there's not an issue with the live. Is that too much ribbon, you guys? <laughs> Did I overdo it? Maybe, maybe just one ribbon. I don't know. Tell me what you think about the ribbon. Is it too much? Is it just perfect? This is going to go on with some Stampin' Dimensionals. And this is going to go on with some Stampin' Dimensionals. Janice says the ribbon is fine. I think because it's so sheer that you can get away with with them, but <laughs> Sandy says never too much. Sometimes I feel like I don't use a lot of ribbon, and so sometimes I, I'm unsure of my ribbon. I do feel like it's a little unruly. I like that a little better. Okay. <laughs> I, I think everybody likes their ribbon. So let's go ahead and glue it down. We're going to add this layer here and then everything else is going on with Stampin' Dimensionals. And again, all, not all, but both of these designer paper patterns are coming from the Celebration um, brochure. So um, if you're looking for where the patterns came from, that's where you can find them. Oh, I love that so much. And you know what we're gonna add to this? <laughs> I have been using the Artist Artistry Blooms, I think it's called, sequins. And they are so perfect for, um, they're so perfect for this um, rainbow designer paper. Like it just matches so well. Okay, I'm trying to get my placement. Just want to scoot that over just a smidge, I think. So you guys always, I know you always notice how I tear apart cards. And part of my trick is that when I'm putting it down, like I don't push down all the way until I kind of, get it just right. So I think that is where I want it. I'm going to have the otter be straight. And then for, for sending this in the mail, this can kind of fold down like that. Um, maybe I'll, ah! <laughs> just when I said I was, gonna, <laughs> I was going to put it down. I'm going to move it down just a smidge. Okay, and then this one, because it's going to rest on the tag, which is already on a dimensional, I only have one dimensional here, and then some regular adhesive to go onto the tag, like so. And I'm going to match the tilt of the designer paper here. So this paper is on a slight angle, and I'm going to make the tag be on the same slight angle. Okay, oh... Oh, ho, 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 ho. I really like the way this turned out. Okay, so one final touch that we're going to get out those Artistry Bloom sequins. And we're going to just jazz it up with a little bit of sparkle. 
get rid of this. Okay. See, I didn't even put them away. I still, <laughs> I still have them out. The Artistry Bloom sequins comes with four different colors. Um, so you get a, a light blue, a purple, and like a sort of calypso corally color and then also like an an orangey yellow and I just feel like the colors go so perfectly with this designer paper so I'm going to use I'm trying to save the good sheets <laughs> and I'm going to use the ones that I already have kind of open and oh gosh I don't know I think since I have the blue and I have the yellow, I'm going to go with the darker color that is kind of more the, um, oh, the Calypso Coral and add, and add some sequins. Oh, yes! Isn't that just perfect? I love the way that turned out. You are utterly awesome. <laughs> okay, I am definitely hooked on these otters. I really haven't played with them a whole lot yet. I made this card for another video um, last month. And then I got this swap card from uh, Margot Richardson. I didn't get out all my swap cards because I think I've shown them to you before. But I just wanted to represent um, the three different otters because we've got one with the fish. And then we've got the one in the water. And then the one that's standing up with the party hat. So, so many different ways that you can use these cute little otters. I hope that you, <laughs> I hope you like this card as much as I do. Suddenly, uh, I'm realizing I missed a whole bunch of your comments. <laughs> um, yeah, he's just so cute. So, so stinking cute. Okay, are you ready to make another card? I, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna bring that out again. I love how they coordinate. Oh, so cute. Okay, um, next up, we're gonna be casing the catalog. And so let's do, I'm really excited about this one. Um, using the Slimline Sayings Bundle. Um, this is, I think, the most expensive bundle that Stampin' Up! has ever had. <laughs> no joke, you guys. The Slim Sayings stamp set is $22, but check out these dies. You can tell just by the size of them that uh, they're going to be a little pricey. This is a lot of metal right here. <laughs> it is like like almost as big as the catalog. So the dies are $59 and the bundle all together where you save 10% on the dies in the stamp set is $72.75. But they're kind of cool, aren't they? I actually got mine half off. Did you know you could do that? When you host a party that is $450 or more, you can choose one 50% off item. This also applies to orders. So if you have a really big order or if you and your friend have a really big order together or you and several friends, it could be a catalog party, then you can earn a half off item and get anything in the catalog for 50% off. So you can get a bundle, you can get the only exception is the stamp and cut and emboss machine. You can get the mini one half off, but you can't get the big one half off. Um, but anyway, that's a really great way to get a bundle like this. <laughs> if you're if you're thinking that you want to get one of these big ones, then um, you should consider hosting either a catalog party and just collect orders from friends. Um, or we could do a virtual party or um, if you're local to central Illinois, perhaps an in-person party. Um, <laughs> things are a little crazy right now with COVID in our area. So um, I lean more towards a virtual party. And I've got I've got one set up with Alita in February. I'm really excited about that. So uh, if that's something you're interested in, let me know. Uh, but we're going to use this big die. These are for slimline cards. And I was saying another time, I've never made a slimline card before. But over here on this page, page 53, we have the new slimline envelopes. And so these are designed for a slimline card, which is three and a half inches by eight and a half inches. 
Um, so the card that we just made for reference is four and a quarter by five and a half. And so you can see it's a little bit narrower, but almost twice as long um, as a regular, like standard size card. So this is this is a first for me indeed. So when I <laughs> when I'm trying to figure out how to use up this space, I definitely was taking some inspiration from the catalog. So I love how we've got the little ombre of different colors, and I think they did some like spritzing and blending to get these colors but it really reminded me of the rainbow glitter paper this is in the annual catalog it's 12 by 12 and look how sparkly <laughs> we have a beautiful like rainbow of colors that starts with a yellow orange pink purple blue green so i've cut two pieces of the rainbow glitter paper and i've put some of the adhesive sheets on the back of each one to make it easier when we die cut it so here's the um, adhesive sheets and um, I just put them on the back. So I need you to vote on which one of these two we should use. Do you prefer the green one or the purple one? So leave a comment and let me know. Um, and then the die, I've cut the glitter paper to be three and a quarter by eight and a quarter, which coordinates perfectly with the die. And I've cut a piece of thick Whisper White cardstock for the card base. So this is um, eight and a half by seven and scored at three and a half inches. So this is like a regular slimline card. Um, and so you only are going to get one, um, one of those to a sheet of cardstock. Um, okay, so I've seen your, your votes come in. And we've got, um, let's see if I can keep track here. Okay, so Tony says blue and purple. We got Pam says purple. Um, Jean says green. Kay says green. Trina says green. Uh, Jennifer says green, Lori says purple, Nancy says green, Janice says green, Penny says purple, Dorothy says green. Um, okay, Susan says, can those slimline cards be mailed with just one first class stamp like a business size envelope? Yes, it is like very similar to a business class envelope. So as long as it's not um, non-machinable and, you know, needing an extra stamp for that, then it can, if it's flat, go like with a regular stamp. Uh, Marlene says purple and Eve says purple. You guys are going to be like so split on this. Yolanda and Sean say green. <laughs> Nicole says purple. Jillian says purple. Uh, Tanya says she'd normally say purple, but she's saying green. Jane says green. April says purple. <laughs> Lynn says green. Janet says green. Uh, okay, I think we're mostly green, so we're going to go with that. <laughs> oh, you can keep in your, your comments coming. I am going to save this and cut it later. Um, I couldn't decide, so that's why I thought you guys could help me out. So I'm going to grab my stamp and cut and emboss machine. Oh, dear. Where is my stamp and cut and emboss machine? <laughs> uh, oh, I see it over there. Okay, hold on a second. Let's uh, let's move this out of the way and let me grab it. Okay, <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, what I have here is like I feel like it looks like it didn't work, but I'm pretty sure that it did because I use the adhesive sheet. It's kind of like holding it all in place. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna peel it off. I should have kept this flat, here we go. Okay, we're gonna peel off the outline. <laughs> I see your comment, Nancy. Is my backup machine black? As a matter of fact, it is. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know, I was having some issues the other day with my stamp and cut and emboss machine and it, I don't know why it was, it was being fussy. How cool is that? Oh my gosh. Um, okay, so I peeled this off and yeah, I guess it is sticky. Okay, so for some reason I feel like it still looks like it has the sticky, um, the sticky liner on it, but it doesn't. So this is really, really thin and delicate. I'm glad that I have the, um, the sticky, <laughs> I'm glad I have the sticky on it already. I feel like I need about three more hands to help me 
to help me get it. You guys just like want to reach through and help me out here. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm just trying to like kind of pull it taut to get it to be flat. And then I'm just going to slowly work. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It's not helping that it's like sticking to itself. When am I going to learn to practice before I go live? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, we're learning together. It's good. Okay. I think that looks good, doesn't it? I'm just going to do like a, a back massage and really just try to make sure that adhesive is sticking really well. Glue booger. That's so cool. Oh my gosh. Okay. So now the fun thing is like over here, they have, um, it looks like they've put them on Stampin' Dimensionals and just put like a couple in and a couple in. So we're going to do the same thing and sort of refill these. Although I have to say these already have adhesive on them. So I'm kind of inclined just to put it back in um, instead of trying to put it on dimensionals. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put it back in. And I'm cheating and using the catalog as a guide to see which ones they put in. And because, again, I already have the adhesive on it, I can just peel it off and stick it right in place. It's like a little puzzle. This is cool. <laughs> okay, let's see. One, two, three. Next is this one. And so then all these other little pieces, like I can, I can do an outline in white and then kind of add like all these pieces into sort of the opposite. This is going to be cool. So I am not going to waste everything. We'll keep it, keep these extra pieces and use them for another project. This is cool, cool, cool. Okay, one more. Okay. Oh, can you see the sparkle? Does that come across? <laughs> Deanna says she would never do this. It's really cool, though. Look at all these pieces. This is, this is really fun. Okay, so I've got my card base done. And then the next thing is the happy birthday greeting. And so for this one, I thought because we have such a dark color with the glitter paper that I would do a strip of, um, a strip of cardstock, um, that is, uh, Bermuda Bay. And I'm going to do, um, embossing on it. I'll heat emboss with white. So, um, and then we can use the, um, pick a punch to punch the ends and give it a little decorative finish. Okay. So first things first with our, our embossing, we're going to use our embossing buddy just to get rid of any of the static that is on the um, cardstock. And I realize this is something that Stampin' Up! doesn't sell anymore, but I do think it's an important step when you're embossing. Then we're going to use the Bursa Mark ink, which is a watermark pad. And we're going to stamp this in this clear ink. And I'm going right in the middle. This is a three quarter of an inch strip. Um, I cut it extra long so that I could um, hold it when I'm embossing and then I can cut it down and use the punch to get the, the nice finish that I want. I'm using a coffee filter, but you could also use a piece of um, paper or cardstock or whatever to catch the extra um, embossing powder. And then um, you can funnel this back into your jar to use it again. So this is the embossing powder. It sticks to that clear ink. 
and again you're just going to funnel that back in now we have embossing powders that are in a collection so you get there's like basic embossing powders so it has like um there's a white and a black and clear together and then metallics silver gold and copper i think is the third one okay now the third part of heat embossing is that you're going to use some heat on it so this is the heat tool from stampin up and there are two settings low and high and you're going to hold the heat over the embossing powder until it melts. Now some people will go from underneath. It doesn't really matter that much. You just wanna make sure that you don't burn your fingers. And you're going to watch for that embossing powder to melt. And you can see as it's melting that it's getting darker. And so once it's melted, it's done. Just gonna switch to the other end. So you do not need to keep heating after it's melted. You're completely <laughs> done. As long as the powder has completely melted and you can see that, especially with this white one as it kind of turns colors. Okay, so there we have our uh, heat embossed image. And I just love, especially with the white, how like bold and awesome it looks to have, um, you know, just really like graphic on there so we could just put it all the way across but i think i like um how they have the um the punched ends so i'm going to use some scissors to cut don't yell at me mom <laughs> about a half an inch three quarters of an inch um from each end and it doesn't really matter if it's straight or not. Like you kind of just want them to be equal on each side, but it doesn't matter if it's exactly straight because the, um, the punch is going to um, fix it. So the tracks on the punch are half inch, three quarters of an inch and one inch. So on the, on the back side though is where you can really kind of center it how you want it to be. Um, and get that decorative edge. I'm gonna turn around and again, like tr I, I don't trust the tracks. I like to turn it around and make sure that I get it centered where I want it to go. And I'm, I'm gonna show you in the catalog. It actually looks like they did not center it very well. Um, I love how this decorative tip kind of matches um, the medallions on the card here. Oh, ho, 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 this is so fun. Okay, let me show you this card again. And um, I'm gonna show you where they <laughs> where they didn't punch it straight. Oops, I'm trying to oh. <laughs> fumble, fumble, fumble. Okay, here's the card again. And if you look really closely, like this end is cut perfectly, but look at this one. The design is closer to the top and has more like a weird thing at the bottom. <laughs> That's okay. It's still it's still awesome. Um, and here is i'm going to add this on now i'm wondering if i should have put these on with some stamp and dimensionals but this is going to go on with stamp and dimensionals i don't know i think i like the glitter just straight down i guess when you make this one at home you can um you can try it with some stamp and dimensionals and see what you think um and which way that you like it but since there's going to be stamp and dimensionals underneath the um the banner i think that the other glitter pieces can be down <laughs> Lynn says that's how hers turned out. <laughs> that's okay. Oh, you know, honestly, it, I'm probably like most people you're sending cards to aren't going to notice. Like, it's just me. I, <laughs> I'm a perfectionist. Oh my gosh, I love it. Oh, Zena, good night. Go get some sleep, girl. <laughs> I'm glad that you tuned in. Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm sleeping at 2 a.m. I can't imagine staying up that late. I, it can be a night owl sometimes, but uh, not, not as much anymore, right? <laughs> okay, so this fits inside our slimline envelopes. And so you can just send that out. And this one, I kept it pretty flat. So you really don't need any extra postage on that. It can just go with a first class stamp um, here in the United States. Yay! <laughs> I love it. I think it's fun. Um, Melissa says sometimes she thinks dimensionals get overdone. 
Um, I think on this car, the dimensionals would like compete with the, the banner. I do love to use dimensionals like I did on the card that we just made, <laughs> but I, I do, I think you're right though. Like you have to have some, the, some things flat and some things, um, with dimensionals. Okay. That was card number two. We, um, are casing the catalog on this one. And I like the, I like the soft colors on the inspiration card. Um, but I really like the glitter paper too. And so I am going to make this card, um, with the, the purple glitter paper, um, later on. I'll have to, I'll have to do a this or that with the completed card and see what you think. Unfortunately, the blue doesn't, you know, it's really kind of light and doesn't show a lot of blue. So it is kind of mostly green. Maybe if I go like the other way and get more colors, that would be really pretty. I have to try that. Okay, well, let's move on. We've got one more project to make tonight, and I'm casing the catalog again because I just, I love to. When there's a new catalog and there's new stuff, this is where I turn for inspiration. This is where I look for ideas, and sometimes I change them and adapt them, and sometimes I'm just like, that's just really cool the way it is. So the next one that we're going to do is the Grassy Grove card right here on page 79. This is the bundle index in the back of the mini catalog. And um, I, I showed a similar card in my bingo video where I used the black cardstock and die cut this amazing die. Let me show you on page 47 where this bundle is featured. I was sort of going for the card here, but I... I did it a little bit differently, but I used the New Horizon um, designer paper. Oh my gosh, you guys, this paper is just so, it's so gorgeous. I love how these watercolor backgrounds are just done for you and you don't have to think about it. You can add some stamps or a die cut and, you know, really make a beautiful card quickly and easily with these landscapes that are already already done I like watercoloring in this sort of like effect is not my strong suit and so I love having the option to feel like an artist with these beautiful papers without having to do all that fussy work myself so I picked out a piece to use for this card it's this one here and I've die cut the um, cardstock with white so we see this scene underneath but instead of you know just having the silhouette like we did here I'm going to do what they did in the catalog and color with Stampin' Blends on the um, on the die cut so let me grab a piece of paper Um, I need to kind of go off the lines here. So I'm using light crumb cake and light old olive. Oh, that's not going to be dark enough. Let's get out the dark. Let's see. Dark, yes. The dark crumb cake, I think, is what we want. And so I know it like feels weird to be coloring on a die cut instead of coloring on like a stamped image but this is how the sample in the catalog was so I'm giving it a try so we're gonna color the branches with crumb cake and then we're going to go back and do the leaves with the light old olive. I was really going for like a pear pizzazz, but we don't have pear pizzazz stampin' blends. So the light old olive is pretty close to that. I should have done this ahead of time as well. <laughs> I should have done a little magic of TV. Okay, I think I got all of the tree trunks. So now we're going to go back with um, the green. And mostly I want the bit in the middle and the top and the bottom are going to stay white, which again is how it was in the catalog. 
So I need to sort of like find a, find an outline of the trees. And then we're gonna just color. Again, I should have tried this before. <laughs> Before we were live, I like the the sample in the catalog, but sometimes trying in person, I always feel a little bit like, um, is this going to turn out? <laughs> you know, oh, you know what? Like suddenly as I'm lifting it up, like, oh, I like that. What do you, what do you think? Do you think we need to add a little more on the top or bottom? So when we combine it here, we have that designer paper that kind of pulls through and we have this scene. Oh, that is pretty. I did do this part ahead of time. I stamped and die cut um, some grass and a deer. And I'm trying to decide on the deer if I like, this one was stamped in crumb cake and this one was stamped with soft suede. And so I'm trying to decide if I like the lighter or the darker version better. I'm leaning towards the darker deer. You can leave a comment and let me know, but I think I'm gonna go with the darker one. The sample in the catalog has a little bit of this ribbon. This is in the um, New Horizon suite. And there's a combo pack that has petal pink along with misty moonlight. So you get both rolls of ribbon in the same pack. And I am going to cut a little bit, which is going to go behind the deer and then this will go on with some Stampin' Dimensionals. This whole thing is going on a petal pink card base and I got the petal pink from the ribbon and then all we need to do is add our sentiment. I chose thank you to go right in there and I'm going to use the um, soft suede I'm so afraid of messing up. <laughs> I'm so afraid of messing up this um, <laughs> this greeting because I have the paper and I have, you know, I'm not going to mess up the die cut, but I won't glue on the die cut just in case. Um, I should practice. I should practice on the scrap paper um, and make sure I can stamp straight. Actually, that's not as dark as I thought it was going to be. That's a little better. Do you practice like this before you stamp on the real thing? <laughs> Try to make sure my block is straight. I don't want to stamp crooked because it has a line on it. I feel like the pressure is on. Okay, it is straight on there. All right, here we go, you guys. Say a prayer, cross your fingers, <laughs> all of the above. Perfect. I wish it was a little bit darker, but I'm going with it. Okay. Oh, I wasn't going to do dimensionals. I was just going to put it down flat, but look at how that creates like this really fun layer. Oh, I am going to use some Stampin' Dimensionals. And for this one, I am going to get out all of my... <laughs> I'm embarrassed to show you. <laughs> These are all my um, my ends, right? Do you guys, do you guys use your... Um, do you use your Stampin' Dimensional borders? Like, I, I always use them. I don't throw them out. But sometimes I, um, I just kind of let it go for a while and I don't... I don't use them all. And so this is my little collection. I, I cut them apart and I put them in this little bag so that when I have something like this where I want to go all the way across, I can use those borders. Okay, so 
I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do one more like right down here so that it gets that good, that good dimension. Okay, so this is going on to the designer paper, but the designer paper is gonna go onto the card. So I'm, I'm gonna do that first. I'm gonna glue the paper onto the card so that I can put the dimensional over it and then not have to try to center it while it's got the extra dimension. So this is going centered on the card base. I mean, gosh, that's just pretty, like, like that, <laughs> isn't it? I'm too easily impressed. Um, and then we're going to center this. Now, I did make the designer paper the same size, but you could use a smaller piece of designer paper, and it would work out just fine, too. Okay, we have more dimension down here than up here. Like, I feel like it could use a little lift. Oh, you guys, don't yell at me, okay? Shh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tearing it. I'm not tearing it. I'm gently pulling it apart because I want to add a little, a little lift. Um, we're going to use some baby dimensionals, some little minis, and just give it a little bit more lift in the trees so that it, um, it doesn't hug the paper so much at the top here. So just strategically placing those in the bigger areas of the foliage. I don't know what's wrong with that one. Let's take it off. These papers are really sticking tonight. They just don't pop off as easy as the other ones, I think. Okay, I think I got them. Now we can go back down. There we go. Now we have a little lift at the top of the trees. That's perfect. Okay, so next up, we're going to do this back and forth with the ribbon. And my, my tip always when I'm doing ribbon behind things is to use a little bit of tear and tape and just kind of use it to hold the ribbon in place where I want it to go. So it's going to go kind of on a little diagonal and we'll just use a little piece of tear and tape to hold it in place. Get it done. Perfect. All right, and then we add the deer. Oh, I love it. Now I've already got dimensionals under here and under here. So I'm just going to add the deer with some regular adhesive because I don't think we need any more dimension. Actually, if anything, I'm going to add some, I'm going to add a dimensional or two maybe underneath the top where he's going to like to make him even. So there's two dimensionals deep there because we've got one under this and one here. So now he's just the right height. Oh, I love that so much. Okay, <laughs> tell me what you think. Was it worth all that fussing? <laughs> Let's take a look at the catalog again and pull up that sample. Again, this was back here in the bundle index. So don't forget to look here for project ideas as well. So here is the original card and there is the, the case. So I really kind of kept it true here. I think I might have used a little bit darker of the car of colors, but... Um, 
I, I, I really did a lot of what was already going on um, with the stamp and blends and everything. Oh my gosh. Okay, you guys have to tell me which one is your favorite of the cards that I made tonight. I didn't make this one, but there's the two Grassy Grove cards. So, so pretty. Okay, so this was our last card. This was our second card. And I know what you guys are going to say. I can't pick a favorite. I know it's hard because these cards are so different tonight. We had the the super fun um, and festive otters, and then the bright glitter paper, and then the, a little bit more subdued, the deer card. But let me know which one is your favorite. Do you like getting inspiration from the catalog? Do you like uh, coming up with something different? Um, I hope you enjoyed tonight's cards and that I have inspired you to case the catalog, or at least to case the projects that I made. <laughs> I look forward to reading all your comments, and I will uh, get a chance to read respond and say hello. Thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you for being here. Um, I always love it when you guys tune in. If you haven't already, order some new stuff and get some free celebration gifts. That rainbow paper, the awesome otters, um, you can get those during celebration free with a $50 gift. And you can shop in my online store at juliedavison.com slash shop. I'll put the host code in the video description along with that supply list that I was telling you about for the whole mini catalog and for the celebration brochure. Thank you guys. I will see you very, very soon with another Stampin' Up! video. In the meantime, happy stamping. Bye!